Omar Omar in, in my in my country they say Omaragic. Omaragic. So okay, tell me exactly where you're from because I I was mistaken before. I thought for whatever reason I see Amir and Amir I thought was Turkish. So yeah, so. A, a lot of people think I'm Turkish, but I'm not Turkish. I'm uh, coming from. I'm born in Montenegro, '99. So um, yeah, I'm born in Montenegro, and we so we moved when I was when I was uh, seven. My father had a new job in Germany, like a, a truck driver. Uh -huh. So we moved all together to Germany. Oh, okay. So you came from what was it, Montenegro? Montenegro, right? It's Montenegro, Balkan. yeah. Like like Milos, Milos from Serbia. I yeah, yeah, yeah. So it used to be Yugoslavia. Yes, yes, yeah. Yugoslavia. I, mean, I go way back. Well, because I used to go every year to Yugoslavia, and there was where Tito was still alive, and uh, when it was all Yugoslavia. Okay, so we got that. Perfect. So now, so when you came to Germany, because people don't understand it, I want people to know, you are 22 years old. You are an IFBB yeah. pro, and you missed an Olympia qualification by just about this much, okay? Yeah. So now, when you came to Germany, so, so did you have to learn the language, or, or were you born, or were you raised in German? Because your German is, is perfect, absolutely perfect. Yeah, yeah, my German is good. My I think my German is good. Thank you. But um, I start uh, like when I arrived in Germany. So my German, I uh, the only thing what I know about German is eins zwei drei. <laughs> that was the only thing that I know about German. So um, my father bring me to school like uh, mm -hmm. first class. So I start to go to school. I didn't understand the first. Three years, I understand nothing. Three so I years? Just go, yeah. I, I really understand nothing. So I go to school every day and uh, just nothing. I had no friends. I had no everything. I was, no, nobody know me because at that time in Germany, it was a little bit new for the people, for the German people. And some another kid from another country came to the class because all Germans... And you came from Montenegro, so nobody can talk to you, you know, because right. you understand nothing. And right. uh, but you try to make friends and everything. So mm -hmm. um, it was a it was a little bit difficult for me the first two three years, but after that my uh, my German is uh, yes it's uh, it got better. It's be so now it's you got better. you speak German like a German. You've been there so long, and your German is you speak better German than me, and and. and you speak the proper German because, you know, I speak a slang from where we're from and the slang is terrible, you know. So if you guys speak German, we don't have to subtitle you. So now you're 22 years old, man. How long have you been yeah. bodybuilding? Because you're already at a point where usually people take 10, 15 years to get to that point. Yeah, I started when I was 15 with my friends. So from the school, after the school, we go every day in the gym. And uh, after one year, everybody go away from the gym. I was the only one who stayed at the gym. So I love it to train. I like to train. I uh, I see fast progression. So I progress very good in the first one year and I want to get better and bigger. And um, at the end of 15, I decided to do a competition because I was the biggest guy in the gym. I was the youngest, but I was the biggest guy. It was a small gym, like, uh, like in a small town. And... Um, a lot of people tell me, yeah, go to the competition, go to the competition. And I tell them, no, no, I'm not going, I'm not doing the competition. Why? I'm not gay because of the, <laughs> of the posing slips, you know? <laughs> yeah. So that's for, I tell every time, that, that's for gays. That's, that's not for me. That's not for me. So, um, yeah, after, after, nah, when I turned 16, my friends, yeah, go, go, try it, try it, try it. So I go uh, to, uh, it calls GMBF. It was like a, it's a different, natural, it's a different uh, federation, yeah. yes. Different federation, yeah. And um, I was, I won my teenage class. I won the junior class. And I miss, uh, I miss the overall be one point. Okay, first show, sixteen years old. Yeah, first show, sixteen years old, and um, yeah, that's how I start. So, 
But what, what made you, what was the reason for you to say, let's go to the gym, I want to be a bodybuilder? What, what, what was the reason for it? Did you see any movies or? The reason was to be, uh, to be honest, the reason was I was uh, with my friends out and um, it's a funny story. They leave me, they leave me like, uh, so we have to go home and I, I want to stay. So I stay, I go to eat uh, something and uh, some older guys come to me and uh, they pushing me away and everything. So, you know. Oh, they bullied you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There was a lot of, old, there was like, I was like, I don't know, I was like 40, 40. And um, yeah, they pushing me away and everything. So I decided, uh, so I go home. At the way of the home, I think about, okay, what I can do, what I can do, I need do, uh, I need uh, because I want, you know, I want to do something with these guys because I don't want to let them uh, to pushing me and you, everything. You, so you didn't want to let that go. You want to, you want to yeah, do retaliation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'm on the way of my home, and uh, I think about okay, what I can do. So um, I have two op opinions: bodybuilding, so make more bigger muscles and look better, look bigger, look stronger, or to do boxing. And I think about it, and my decision was, like, I say, okay, I'm doing bodybuilding because when I have muscles, I will be strong, you know? Mm -hmm. So not strong in the gym, strong in a fight, you know? Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, two days later, then uh, I go with my father because in Germany you can, uh, I think in America too, so you can go in the gym when you're 16 for the first time. But uh, my father bring me there. He make a contract for me and everything for one year and sign up. And um, yeah, that's uh, how I start uh, because I want to, you know, the, I don't want that pushing me and everything. So I want to give yeah. something back. So, so, so you started at 15, you competed the first time at 16. Did you compete natural at, at 16? Yes. Yes. Okay. I was when, when did you decide that you want to make this something bigger than just uh, like a natural show when did you decide i want to be a bodybuilder what who did you look up to the only guys the only the, the my inspiration was um to be honest i everybody like ronnie ronnie was inspiration because i watched a lot of ronnie videos and i like it just how strong he is how hard he was how ripped he was how big he was so this this man had everything mm -hmm. so Maybe, uh, maybe people in my age they look like maybe for some fitness guys like uh, I don't know Sadiq or mm -hmm. who else you know fitness but <laughs> yeah like fitness yeah fitness, Sadiq yeah. is not a fitness guy but <laughs> yes I know but you know what I mean I know, you know you mean. What like I mean. more like a model look yeah yeah more like a model look but my, in my opinion that was like this guy was. A lot. They was too small for me. Mm -hmm. I want to get bigger. I want to get bigger. I want to get bigger. And when I came to the decision to do another show in the IFBB, so I was uh, I take a, like I take an off season like from 16 to 18, and then I start my prep. A lot of people in Germany don't know that I did one year classic physique. That was my that was my first IFBB show. Okay, so, so from 16 to 18, I just don't want to get this wrong. From 16 to 18, you did, uh, you did an off-season, just to put on some size. Yes, yes, I did an off-season. So did you already, was that all natural? Yeah, that was all natural. Okay, okay. And, and then when I start to get 18, because when, when I turn 18, I start to use some protein powder okay. and everything, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yes, and... Uh, that was my decision and then after that when i start um to take the protein powder and everything i make the decision okay i want to go on an ifbb stage i want to try how i look and to be i was not so big for the open class you know because for real bodybuilding i can't do it but it doesn't look good right so my decision was to do classic physique and i did classic i did the amateur olympia in spain and uh, I placed 16, like from 100 people, you know, yeah. even you play 16, you are nothing. Yeah. So um, I, yeah. I tell myself, so I tell myself after that show, okay, I have to do something. I need to have a coach who knows everything and uh, who can explain me 
everything better. So you did all this before without a coach, even when you started, yes. even when you started using some stuff, you did that. Who told you what to do and how much of it? I had, I had an old friend, old friend. Uh, it's, um, uh, you know him, Erdem, you know him? Who? Erdem, Erdem. Oh, yeah, 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 of course. Yeah, yeah. yeah. He helped me a little bit. He was the only guy, the only guy. I didn't know nobody, you know? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I didn't know nobody, so... I go to him, he had a small shop, supplement store and everything. So I go there and uh, I ask him, I need your help. I want to prep. I want to do a show and I want to um, yeah. get bigger. So he, helped, so, so, so he gave you some information for you to start by yourself. Yes. Okay, fast forward. Now you realize after place the 16th, you need a coach. Yes, I realized I need a coach because when you don't know nothing, you, yeah. you be nothing, you know? So... I decided to contact uh, Patrick Tour at that time. And um, yeah, Patrick was the first coach who showed me a lot of bodybuilding, who showed me how, who showed me like how to take everything and how to train and uh, a real uh, meal plan and everything. So like a structure, you know, like mm -hmm. a real plan. Yeah. So um, after that, after I go to Patrick, one year, like eight months later, I decided, uh, Patrick, Patrick decided and me to do a show in the IFBB again. So um, a pro qualifier mm -hmm. again in Denmark. So when I did that pro qualifier in Denmark, so we prepped and everything, everything was good. I gained like from classic physique from eight and eight months. I was in classic physique stage, 94 kilograms. Mm -hmm. People always ask how I got here. I was willing to work just a little harder than everyone else. Every damn day. If I can have hundreds of hours back, you know I'm gonna grab them. Spending hours prepping chicken, rice, and vegetables, F that. I rely on perfect nutrition. I rely on trifecta. And then uh, on the, when I, uh, my, when I had my first open class pro show, Pro show, pro qualifier. I, uh, my weight was like 112 kilograms. So, so in eight months, you went from 90, what was it? 90 what? 94. From 94 to 112? Yeah. So we're talking six, uh, we're talking 22 kilos. Yeah. We're talking like of almost 50 pounds. Of pure muscle. So I was <laughs> a lot, 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 lot bigger. But uh, uh, Patrick, uh, uh, I don't know how. What do you mean? I don't know what how do you mean you is? don't know how? You were there. I don't know how I gained this mess so well, fast. And well, you're probably, okay, of course, you're young, number two. You have, uh, uh, you know, you use some uh, supplements. And, uh, you know, and you probably have a genetic uh, 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 ability to put on a lot of weight. I mean, it's in the beginning, everybody, when they start... Everybody puts on a lot of weight, you know. Some people put more, some people put less, but some people have more information, so like you had, and therefore were able to put a little bit more on. That's a lot of weight, so that's not something that's going to happen every year, you know. Yeah. So that's the first year. So, okay, so you went to the uh, pro qualifier in Denmark. How did that go for you? Yeah, I was second. Okay. I was second. One point, one point, uh, I missed one point for pro cut, so he beat me by one point. It was a guy from Lithuania, I think. And um, yeah, after, so I took second, mm -hmm. I lose. So I decided to do another show to the amateur, again, one year later then, mm -hmm. the amateur Olympia in Spain, like uh, the one year before when I did classic. The same show, yeah. So, yeah, the same show. And I placed third at that show. So he gave me, they tell me like I was too small and everything like, you know, they are, another guys were bigger because they train like 10, 15 years mm -hmm. more, you know? Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, it was a huge experience for me because, um, now I start like, like to have fire in me, you know? Mm -hmm. So I want to more, I want to get better. I want to get bigger and I want to do more. So yes, um, we did that show. 
and after that we took an off season again. So we d- did the off season, and um, I was in my off season. My highest weight was like six months after the Olympia, one hundred thirty five kilograms. Mm-hmm. So I, I turned twenty twenty years, and then yes, after that. Um, I want to do another show, of course. I want to start again to prep and everything. And then Corona. Corona has destroyed everything. Mm-hmm. I can't train for like one month. But, didn't you, but, but didn't you ch- uh, switch coaches in before that? Didn't you switch from Patrick to, to Milos? Yeah, I, I, switched, I switched from Patrick, but not, uh, not, at that cor- not at that next show, you know? Not uh, in the Corona time. Uh-huh. So, oh, I, uh, I thought yes, I thought yes, in the in the Corona time. In the Corona time, I switched I switched from Patrick to um, to Chris Acido because uh, Patrick was. Uh, wait, wait a minute, wait a minute. Back off, back off. We we going too far. You started with Patrick. Yes. And didn't you switch from Patrick to Milos? Yeah, yes, I switched to Milos for, for eight weeks. I was working with Milos eight weeks because. The, I have to be real. Patrick didn't answer me more on my emails uh-huh. and uh, messages and everything. So um, I texted him like two months. Can I have an answer and everything? And also I didn't get the answer. So I have to look to move forward, you know? Mm-hmm. So I have, I was in contact with Milos since I am 16. I texted a lot with him. I asked him some training tips and everything. And uh, yeah, I asked Milos and yeah, Milos was a good guy. He helped me a lot. But um, I worked eight eight weeks with him. But why was, only uh, eight? Why only eight weeks? Uh, I think uh, he, we have different mindsets about some uh, some stuff, you know. Uh-huh. Because uh, I was like I was like Pony. It was uh, his training and everything. It was too hard for me. Uh-huh. Oh, so you mean, know, to mean the, the way he trains with the giant sets and stuff. Yeah, the way Giant said and everything and the supplementation and uh, all that stuff and um, so you guys, it was, you guys just didn't. It, it just it wasn't a good fit. Yeah, it was. It, it didn't was good. So because okay. he had a different thing about something, uh, he, he had a different mindset about things. Yeah, and had a different. You, so yeah. you know what I mean. I know exactly what you mean, and this is not a knock on Milos because we all know Milos is a great coach, but yeah, this is not. It, it you know, and a great coach. Is only great when the chemistry is right, and when it doesn't yes. work, and it doesn't work, then you yes, know somebody yes, yes. somebody has yes, to move that, on. So you moved. Yes, so you changed from Milos to Chris, or did you go back to Patrick? Because I remember hearing something about you going back to Patrick first. Yes, I go. I go Patrick. I, I after that. I after Milos, I text Patrick again. I already didn't get the answer from Patrick. Like maybe uh, four months. Mm-hmm. I texted him again back after Milos because I really like to work with Patrick, you know. So um, I text Patrick and he helped me like for the next five weeks. And then I didn't get the answer again. So, you oh, know? really? Why, 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 yeah. why, why would you think that is? Why, why? I mean, after you guys had such a successful off season, why would he all of a sudden disappear on you? I don't know. I don't know. You still don't know to this I, day? I don't know. Hmm. I don't know. I think the problem was because. He don't like my weight, how I train, you know, because I really like, I like the old school philosophy, you know, I like to train heavy, I like to train hard, and um, he wanted that I train like uh, the SST program, you know, his program, and mm. I didn't like it. Yeah. I I need why, to have fun in the gym. Why would someone tell you how to train if you, as a bodybuilder, know yourself what you feel the most, you know? I would never... You know, and I, and I mean, I mean that in a good way. I would never push up, push a, a, a training style on someone. If you feel, it's like somebody's telling, you know, back then would tell Rami, uh, uh, Ronnie to, to do this, to do this style. Ronnie was doing his style and it worked for him. And, you, and if you feel it, that's, that's the way you should go for it. I mean, I totally get that. I just don't get why, why all of a sudden. What did he say? Why didn't he reach out to you in the four months that you were trying to get hold of him? Did he give you any reason uh, at all? Uh, he didn't. Uh, I didn't get the answer yeah. directly. So that's, I, that's, he, did, he said, when I tell when I tell him, uh, so I um I need your help, Patrick. He say, okay, tell me what's the problem and everything. I will help you. 
So he didn't answer the questions before, you know, mm, when I asked no. why, why I answer and everything. So he he helped me like four to five weeks. And after that, um, I again, no answer. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's no, so that's, that's, that's normally doesn't even sound like him. So from what I hear, maybe, maybe I don't know. I respect Patrick. Yeah. No disrespect to Patrick. Patrick is a very, very good coach. Yes, I respect yes. him a lot, of course, but um, but I don't know why I didn't yeah. get the answer. Yeah, maybe maybe one day you'll get it. So now maybe you, you when did, I meet him. Not now you did an executive decision and you contacted Chris Acido. Yeah, Chris Acido. I contact him and. Um, to be honest, I sent him just an email. I said, hey, Chris, I am 20 years old. I, my coach was Patrick before and Milos, da, 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 telling the story and everything. So um, he said, yes, of course, let's start. And, uh, you know, Chris is a really smart guy. Really, really smart, really easy to work with him. So he's just, he's just a very humble guy too. So I like Chris because... Um, Chris' philosophy is like no rush and everything and uh, no rules. This guy, Chris, he don't have rules, you know? So sometimes... So, so he let you do what you want to do? Yes, he let yeah. me do what I want to do. So um, he made me, of course, he made me everything, a diet plan and a supplement plan and everything. So it, it works. Mm -hmm. It was good. It was good. We did like a small off season, like two months. And then Chris say, okay, we start the prep. We want to get your pro car. So after we start the prep, um, everything was good. Gyms are open again and everything. And we can go train the gym like normal. Everything was normal. And then like uh, two weeks before the show, or one week or 10 days, I fly to Montenegro because we I had a show, I had a pro qualifier show in Moscow. Okay. So at that time, it was so much uh, COVID and everything. So Germans can fly to Russia. So I did another way. I fly to Montenegro first, from Montenegro to Serbia, from Serbia to Moscow. You had to go all the way around just to get there. Yes, yes. So look, I was when I was in Moscow, the customers tell me, hey, they talk to me, eh, everything is good. I had everything, test, PCR test and everything at that time. And at the end, um, yeah, you can go in. They won't. You can't go. Can't go in. You can or you cannot? I cannot go in. Why? Because uh, like five hours before, Vladimir Putin, so his decision was like nobody, nobody in the world can go to Russia for the next four weeks because of COVID. Uh -huh. So two hours later, I'm back again to Montenegro, Serbia again, then Montenegro again. And I was so disappointed, Dennis. Mm. I was really, really sad because I did everything what I need to do. I pay the flights, I didn't have a sponsor and everything, so mm. I pay everything alone, you know, mm -hmm. and the hotel and everything, I booked everything, and I was really, really sad, because I wanted to compete, I want, yeah, I did everything, I had everything, and five hours to go, so when I fly one day before, it will be okay. You, you just missed the deadline, yeah. Yeah, I, yeah, I missed the deadline, right. And yeah. I text Chris and I say to Chris, Chris, we have when, a when when was that? What what month? What month on, and what year? Mm, that was last. That was stop. That was this year. This year, January. Okay, so early in the year. So you've been a base, yes. You've been basically prepping almost all of twenty one. Yes, yes, yes. That yes, was yes, a long yes. prep then. Yes, of course, of course. So you came course. home fucking disappointed, of course. Told Chris, listen, they wouldn't let me in. So what was the plan now? To come off? To do, you know, get back in the off season or just continue and start uh, competing as much as possible? Chris is the guy who's pushing you. Chris is the guy who's pushing. He's not giving off. You say, okay, no problem. We find another show on the planet. So mm -hmm. you go back to go back to Montenegro, start training everything. And uh, yeah, that's what I did. I fly back. I did my job and everything. And um, 
then after three weeks, everything opened again in Germany. So no lockdown more. So we, I can go regularly normally to the gym and everything, mm -hmm. I, all the stuff. I fly back home to Germany. And yeah, after that, I prep again and we find in Poland the show. Like three weeks later. In February then? Yes. Yes. Okay. So uh, I go to after regular prep and everything. So I go to Poland and I took second. Some Polish guy beat me mm -hmm. and I was again, in my opinion, I was better, a lot better, a lot heavier. I think I was 20, 20 kilograms heavier than all these guys. Mm. But uh, you know how it is sometimes. Sometimes yeah. you win, sometimes you lose. And um, yeah, I was again more disappointed than in Moscow. And I uh, could say, okay, no problem. We do another <laughs> show. Chris is laid back. Now. He's, uh, yes. he's very laid yes, back. Because... And, uh, but I was, to be honest, I was very tired, you know. I didn't want to do more show because I think I need more mass. I need more muscles and mm -hmm. everything. Chris say, no, you know, you're good. You're good. Do the show. Do the show. I said, okay, then um, I think five weeks later was Portugal. Mr. Big Evolution, pro qualifier. And yeah, it was, uh, it was the five, this five weeks was the hardest ever in my life in a prep. Because I was starving and I was tired really and I can't sleep nights and all that stuff, you know. Mm -hmm. So, okay, we... Uh, we go to Portugal, we did that show, and finally I won. Mm -hmm. Got your pro so, card. Yes, that's that's when I get my pro card. That was, uh, was that May? What what month? Yes, May. 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 Okay. May. So now, basically, you, you know, you achieved what you wanted to achieve. You wanted to get your pro card. So now, because you've already been tired. So now, this would have been the perfect time to say, okay, now, shut it down, get some rest. Yes, yes, that's what the, the normally that's the thing what I what was in my mind. <laughs> yeah. I really want to rest because I was happy. I get finally this card, uh -huh. and I say to Chris, "Okay, Chris, let's let's do a break, maybe one month, two months, and then we can start a small off season and everything." What do you say? No. He said no. <laughs> Chris said, no. You, you. Yes, Chris said we keep going, we keep going. I say to him, Chris, it's better really let's do a small break, just a small break. He said, "Okay, let's 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 do two weeks a break." <laughs> I said, "Okay, two weeks." <laughs> so we did. So we did two weeks a break, and Chris, um... you diet down, train hard, and supplement smart for months. When the time comes to step on stage, don't leave your tan to chance. Go with the pros. Pro tan. Number one worldwide since 1987 and the official sponsor of the Olympia for the last 15 years. Don't step on stage without it. Pro 10. Say, so, yeah, you have the meal plan. So no cheats, training and everything, but just a little bit relaxed, you know? Mm -hmm. And yeah, after that, uh, after the two weeks, uh, I really didn't want to do a show, you know? Because I was really tired, you know, mm -hmm. six months, like six months of prep and everything, five months. And um, Chris said, okay, let's look for one show, two shows, or three shows. I don't want one show, two shows, or three shows. So why? Yeah, yeah. He, 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 he said, like, let's do a lot of shows. You need experience. Yeah. You need experience. Let's do a lot of shows. So I say, okay, let's do it, Chris. And we start the prep again, you know, we, I, I was already finished, you know, so mm. we start again the prep. So we do a small rebound and everything. And then we go like, uh, we do then one month the rebound, but not, uh, not the strong rebound, just really, really small, just a little bit more food and uh, just uh, to make me, to make me that I can't train, you know, you know how it is. Yeah. yeah. So. <laughs> We start the prep again, and everything was perfect in this prep. Everything goes, everything right. Everything was really perfect. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and then we came to the show in Prague. So Chris said to me, I said, Chris, okay, let's do Prague. And then done for this year, you know. He said, wow, you already finished. You prepped, so let's do more shows. I said, okay, Chris, if you're telling me, yeah, let's do more shows. Mm -hmm. 
and yeah, we go to Prague. And in Prague, it was for me like a dream when I was in Prague. Because, uh, you know, when you stand, when you, I remember when I was 17 or 16, it was the Amateur Olympia, that picture that I sent yesterday to you. Mm -hmm. that, the Amateur Olympia in Europe, you know, in Dortmund. Dortmund. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And uh, Roly was there, Sean was there, Lionel was there. Dexter was there. Mm -hmm. I remember. I emceed the show. Yeah, yeah. And when I uh, first time, I I didn't have money. I didn't have money this, at that time to pay a ticket, you know, to watch the show. So I I just was in an expo because the expo was was like ten euros, mm -hmm. you know. And the show the show ticket was like uh, fifty euros. I don't know, but I re just remember I just had the money to drive with the with the train to the to Dortmund. And to go there and to watch it. So um, that feeling when I saw the first time Roly Winkler, you know, mm -hmm. that was like unbelievable. Because I asked myself, I was like in this, uh, you know, I put it a little bit again to watch a little bit the show, you know, that nobody can see me. So um, when I see Roly, I just like this, wow, <laughs> man, how is this possible to look like this? You know, and I ask myself every time, every time, how is this possible? And then in Prague, when they call us out, me, Roly, and another guy, some other guys, you got to stand I next was to him. next to him. Yeah? And then they say front double. And I first in the first, because I was so focused, you know, when you're on stage, I was so focused. I didn't see Roly's next behind to me. So they say like front double. We did the front double, and I look to my left, and I see Roly <laughs> next to me. Next to me. And in my and at that time, and that in this five seconds, Dennis, I had a flashback. You know, I remember the time when I watched him five, six years ago, yeah. and now I am on stage with him. You know, yeah. yeah, battling. I swear you, this moment, that was one of the best moments of my life. There you go, because you know. When you uh, when you dream about something and then you come every step near and you see Roly behind you and you remember hey, six years ago I watched him I asked some how is it possible to look like this and everything so yes it was I very very good I'm a hundred percent sure I'm gonna tell you right now I'm a hundred I'm a thousand percent sure that you will have some more moments that will top that one in the future. Because you, at 22 years old, and, and where did you place uh, in, in Prague? What place did you get? Seventh place. Seventh. Then you went on to do the uh, another show in Romania. Romania. Where you placed in Romania. Fourth place. Fourth place. And then you went to Spain. Second place. And barely missed an Olympia qualification against a guy who's normally in the 212. Yeah. You know? So yeah. you know you are that close to uh, to qualify for the Mr. Olympia, so do you, your dreams, the dreams that you have, you could keep on dreaming because they're gonna they're yeah. gonna come true in the future. You're 22 years old. You have so much time. Yes, that, that's 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 right. But um, for me, it's better that I didn't want the show. Mm. You know, because when I saw him win, I tell myself, okay, next time I have to get it. No matter what, I next yeah. time I have to get it. Yeah. So it it it. it it, it gives me a more drive, you know, it gives me a better drive. It's, maybe it's for the people, it's stupid, because they say it's better when you win, you have to go straight to the Olympia. But I want to win, uh, Janice, I want to win show when, when the lineup is really competitive, you know? I d don't want to win a show like, uh, listen, to be honest, listen, Spain. Listen, Spain, look, it's, Spain. It, it's not your fault when the lineup is not competitive or when the people, yeah, are, the yeah. people in the lineup are not in shape. You're going to take that win regardless. If you win, you yeah. win. Or are you going to say, no, I don't want it because I don't like the people that are standing on stage? No. That's, listen, don't think about that. In the future, you win, you win. It doesn't matter who shows up. You know? Don't tell yourself you don't want to win unless it's competitive. It's always competitive. It doesn't have to be the big names for a show to be competitive. Trust me. There's a lot of good bodybuilders out there that don't have a name. But if you look at them, they look like they could be in the top and mix it up with these big names, you know what I'm saying? So don't 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 think this way. You you tw like I said, you're 22 years old. You have everything going for you. You are. 
I mean, I, I'm looking at your pictures, and this one picture stands out to me, and, and, and this is exactly why I say what I say about you, because you have a quality and detail. This, this, this is what I'm looking at, this, this back double biceps from the inside. Yeah, 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 yeah. You have a quality and a detail and, and a condition that we used to see in our times. You know, you don't see that every day nowadays. So therefore, I know you're on the right track. And I guess you and Chris, that's a good combination for you. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, so so well, all the only thing I say is like, take your time. You don't have to rush anything. You're 22 years old. You're a kid. My daughter is 29. You know what I'm saying? You, I mean, I, mean you, you have, I didn't even start training until I was 26. You know? So uh, you have so much time. Just listen. I, I don't want to say anything about what your game plan is, that your game plan about you and for you and Chris. I'm sure you guys have a great plan. Just, just, just know that you have all the time in the world. You don't need to rush anything. But yeah, you're, yeah. All, oh. you're almost, you're almost there. You know what I'm saying? So if you look at, if you look at your physique right now, what, what, what do you think you need to improve on? I think legs. legs Bring your legs shoulders, up a little bit. And chest. Yeah, because you, you're tall, right? How tall are you? Yeah, uh, like six one. Six like one. One eighty five centimeters. Yeah, six one. That's tall in bodybuilding. <laughs> If you fill your frame out, oh, it's, it's ridiculous. It's going to be insane. I can already see it. And I'm sure Chris has a great plan. You know, you know if, if guys like you, you got to set a five-year plan. Where does he want to be in five years? But to be honest, without Chris, I didn't walk it so far, I think, in my opinion. Because Chris is, really, Chris is really pushing me. He's really talking a lot to me. He's really talking a lot to me. Mm -hmm. And... Um, He's showing me a way of bodybuilding that I before nobody showed me, you know, mm -hmm. because Chris believed in me, you know, Chris believed really a lot in me. And that's the thing what, what give me like the fire, you know, when you have someone like, like a so good coach, like Chris, you know, mm -hmm. like Jay, Sean and all that people he prepped. And when a guy like, like who prepped a lot of Olympians, you know, mm -hmm. believe in you. So that give you so, well, listen, Chris is a smart man. Chris is a smart man. And when he sees you, I mean, how can he not believe in you? I mean, it's, it's right there in front of me, you know? So if I look at a guy look like this at 22, I think sky is the limit. I believe sky is the limit. If you can bring, and, and it, we'll, I'll talk to you like I would talk to someone that's been training for 20 years. You're not. You're training like a few, a few years. So, six years. Yeah, six years. So you got, you got so much more uh, 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 that you, listen, you will grow into that frame and you will be a force and I believe you will be on the Olympia stage doing some damage. Okay? Thank I really you. believe that. I really believe. Just looking at what you achieved in the last couple of years and saw what you looked like at your last show, I can see you being on the Olympia stage and doing some damage, especially at six foot one. You're probably going to be somewhere around I say 260, 270 pounds on stage, or maybe even more. Who knows? And and if this condition, I was, I was, I was in a, in a, in Spain. I was 118 kilograms on mm -hmm. stage. Yeah, four stage. I, or I, so that's like how much in? Uh, it's like 260. 260. Yeah. So what, you're right. 270, yeah. 270, 275. Yeah, 275. Like, and that condition right there. Yeah. You do some damage. I'm 100% convinced. So when you look at yeah. the when you look at the bodybuilders today, in the open class, uh, yeah. uh, who impresses you the most? To be honest, only uh, two guys. Yeah, who? who? Rami and Brad Curry. They both. They both impress you. What What is it the about? What is it? Like, a, huh? The another guys are like. Um, uh, I. Uh, I have wanted to, uh, one thing to tell you about Chris. Chris telling me every time before stay, I was really nervous before Prague and Spain and Romania and everything. I was really, really nervous, you know? Mm -hmm. And Chris tell me, uh, I call him backstage and I say, Chris, I'm really nervous, so what to do, you know? And Chris say, look, Amir, they are overrated. All these guys are overrated. 
he say the top five Olympians, these guys are very good. All the others, you can beat all of them. Mm. You know, mm -hmm. so that's what tell me, and that give me like a, how to explain it in English, like um, give you a motivation. It, it give me motivation, and it make me so it make me more like. Um, Relax it you. It calms you for the stage, you know. It, it make my mind uh, so it calms you down. Mind. It calms you down. Yes, it, it calms me down, and uh, yeah, that's the thing. I just really, I just okay. really respect. I respect all the people, all those guys, but I think really all of these guys are beatable. But Rami and Ben are really far away, another level. Yeah, yeah. you know, everybody is beatable. You know. Yeah. Everybody. Oh yeah, everybody's beatable. That's 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 a given. Everybody can get beat on any given day because like i said you know if it's a different story if everybody would be a hundred percent but if you're not a hundred percent you're going to get beat you know it just it happens you know so 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 your goal is to be on the olympia stage when did you set yourself a goal time wise uh, next year of course <laughs> next year of course so, so what's the game plan now? What's what, what's coming up for 2022? What show are you going to enter to qualify? Um, me and Chris decide to do the New York Pro. Okay. First, and then to look forward what we can, what mm -hmm. shows are in front of them. Good, so good New York Pro, smart move. Do... Smart. New York is a good show. It's a good show. Yeah. It's a good show to, then, get, to get in front of the U.S. judges. Yes, and maybe, yeah. New York Pro first, and then let's look. Let's look, you know. Let's look what we can do next. So, like you say, no rush. No rush, yeah. First step one, and then step two, step three, you know. So what's going on in Germany right now? What's happening with the with the COVID? The new um, uh, um, um, Omicron, Omicron, Omicron. I heard that Omicron. they. I yeah. heard that they about to shut down again. Yeah, there's one shut down again. I think in the next ten days. Mm. They make again a lockdown, and I am, I gone. Where are you going again? You going? I, I'm going to Montenegro again. Yeah, uh, my yeah. all my I have friends in Germany. They left for Thailand. They left like two days ago. They know it's coming, so they they got out of there. Yeah, <laughs> it's crazy, huh? It's crazy. Yeah, it's it's uh, <laughs> Germany is Germany. You know, Germany is a little bit special for this stuff, and uh, we had uh, we have a lot of good uh, people in Germany who. So, but do you, know, but do you think the gyms gonna sh are gonna shut down again? What the gyms are they gonna stay open? Yeah. Oh, no, no, no. They want to shut everything down. Yeah. Everything That's full crazy. lockdown again. I think minimum, minimum like four weeks. Yeah, I, I saw something today where it says until mid January. At least till mid January. Yeah. Yeah, wow. I think like I, they wanna they wanna wait for Christmas, and everything is over, and then. They want to shut everything down. Yeah. Well, listen, get out of there if, if you can so you can get into the gym because you got to prep for the New York Pro. Listen, of course, listen thank you for making the time. Um, I, can't, you, I can't wait for the people to see what's coming from Emir because I believe you will be also one of the, one of the, 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 the stars in the future representing Germany, just like us, young guy. Tw US is 23, you're 22. You guys have, hey, sky's the limit. Okay, so yes. like I said, thank you for coming on. I appreciate it. Thank take, you, guys. Take care of yourself. You. Merry Christmas. You too, too. In, thank you. And good rutsch ins neue Jahr natürlich. Ne? <laughs> Und halt die Ohren steif. Ne? Machen wir. Dankeschön. Also, thank you very much. I appreciate that I can be in your podcast and talk about it. You will be back here <laughs> when you qualify for the Olympia. I want to talk to you again. Of course. Of course. All, right. <laughs> All right, my friend. Take care, brother. <laughs>